Good evening and welcome to Your Time to Shine, a radio show designed to help you explore your own divine gifts. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the show. I am your host, Julie Yeager Walker, and thank you. Big shout out to um, Shauna from Nature's Keeper last week as she filled in for me as I was under the weather and not uh, feeling top notch. So, uh, Shauna, big thank you for um, for helping out there. And how is everybody doing this evening? Um, It's been a very intense week with a lot of emotion out there with the eclipse uh, happening again. We seem to be getting uh, numerous eclipses that are just wreaking havoc on our emotions, um, especially in the first couple of weeks of 2019. And I actually had a different topic lined up for uh, tonight until actually last night I was realizing what the date was. And for me, today is a significant date. Um, It is exactly two years since my dad has passed. And I always try to honor him Uh, in some way, in some fashion. And I thought, you know, this would be actually a really good topic for people um, if they are looking for a way to honor their loved ones that have passed. And what does that look like? Uh, What does that entail? Well, I can tell you what works for me. um, And then I have some other tips and guidelines that might help you um, find the right thing for your loved one. And I actually have to give some credit to my sister-in-law. And when her mom passed back in 2006 and the year anniversary came up, um, her, her tribute to her mom was a random act of kindness. And what that looked like was she posted on Facebook Um, a really nice picture of her mom and the date and said, please um, use this as a random act of kindness in the name of, and she put my, our mother-in-law's name in there. Um, And then what she suggested, she even, you know, she put it in there, you could print it and then you could hand it to somebody in whatever you felt the random act of kindness meant to you. So for instance, you could buy coffee for the person in front of you or behind you and then hand them um, this little tribute um, in honor of our mother-in-law. And I just thought it was so beautiful and so right on the money, especially for my dad. My dad was so kind and so generous, um, not only with his family, uh, but with um, with the community that he lived and worked in. Um, he did so much for so many people um, that after he passed, we had so many people come up to us and tell us how kind and generous he was and told us things that we didn't even know um, that my dad had done for this for this person, for their family, um, whatever. So As I was honoring my dad last night, I reached out on Facebook and just um, said, if you feel the urge to have a random act of kindness dedicated in um, my father's name, it could be a simple hug. Um, It could be a smile to someone as you're going down the street. Um, It could be anything. Um, It could be you know, if you're in line at McDonald's, it may be paying for the family's meal that is behind you. Um, it could be anything, whatever it is that sings to your heart um, is is what you should do. And so, you know, the, the other tribute um, that I thought was so beautiful that my sister-in-law did is that my mother-in-law actually loved her black coffee. And so we would sit down for a number of years on the date of her passing, and we would all order a cup of black coffee. Now, for me, 
that was really hard. I am not really a coffee drinker. And definitely, if it doesn't have all of the stuff that's really bad for you, the sugar, the cream, and all that other stuff, um, it's it's hard for me to do. But I would, in the honor of our, our mother-in-law, uh, take a sip of black coffee and um, just say a simple prayer and offer a thanks to her in that. So some of the other things that you can do to honor your loved one. And by the way, when you do these little things and you honor the loved one, it really makes you stop and think. Um, It puts things in perspective. It gives you a little bit of smile and a little bit of uplift um, to, you know, in in honoring them. And it kind of takes the sting away just a little bit of all the the grieving. Because, you know, the grieving, it's really icky and sticky and yucky. and, And nobody likes to have to go through all those motions. So I have found that this really helps with me personally and really helps with the process. Uh, Some of the other things that you can do to honor your family was, you know, pass down grandma's homemade bread recipe. Make make bread in the honor of your mom or your grandmother. Um, In my case, my dad was a pickle maker, which actually was handed down from his mom. And so the first year that he was gone, my mom and my nephew made pickles in honor of my father. So doing something like that, that you can pass down generation to generation and share that little piece of that person uh, can be really, really important. Um, You know, talking about their gestures, talking about um, their figures of speech or what made them laugh, sharing stories about that person. Um, with other loved ones, um, you know, with your kids, with your grandkids, all of these things to help them remember that person um, in some way, shape or form is is a really great way to honor that person as well. Um, You know, talking about generations, you can talk about, you know, some of the things that that person did growing up. I know for me, one of the stories that that stuck out in my mind of my dad um, growing up on a farm in Minnesota. Um, His family didn't have running water probably until I think the early 70s. Um, So they did all their washing by hand. And I remember my aunt's talking about how terrible wash day was. You'd wash the clothes, you'd hang them up and around the room and you'd have the You'd have the stove going and everything would be so humid and moist and just yucky. And but you couldn't hang them outside in the middle of winter. Um, And I remember the story how they hung some jeans outside and they literally were able to shake them once and they broke the jeans in half because they had uh, become solid ice. And I just find that fascinating, not living in that kind of a climate. We live in such a mild climate here um, in or in uh, Pacific Northwest of Oregon. And so something like that's really hard for me to wrap my head around. But it does make for really great stories um, about that person and being able to remember them and to honor them. And so as you're thinking about you know, you're going through your grieving process, definitely go through all of that. Um, But when it comes time and it feels right and you're ready to honor that person, stop and think about what the most profound things were about that person. Um, And that will give you a better idea of what it is that you want to do in their honor um, to not only help you through your grieving process, but also to remind others what that person was about and what that person was like. So I hope that helps and I hope you find a little bit of ease in all of that um, and all of those suggestions. Um, I will try to go back to uh, your time to shine and post a few of these up on the um, up in the posts so that if you have any questions, you can always refer back to some of those ideas that we've talked about here tonight. So right now we have a caller on the line. We have Wendy in Manchester, England. Good evening, Wendy, and welcome to your time to shine. 
How are you this evening? I'm fine. Good. What can we help you with this evening? Um, to get a reading to somebody that's passed over. Okay. Is there a particular question you have, or are you just looking for some general idea of some general reading? Yeah, just general. A general reading. Okay. Okay, so let me check in here um, with Spirit just for a moment. And um, so you may hear some silence, but be uh, let, let it be known that I'm still here. I'm just kind of pausing for a moment to kind of check in, okay? Right. Okay, uh, so I have a gentleman um, stepping forward. Um, he's showing me that he is an um, is an older gentleman, um, possibly a, maybe a father or an uncle. Um, he's he's showing me. Uh, it, he looks like he is, uh, you know, possibly in his fifties or sixties. Um, he's kind of, he's balding on the top, but he has like a, a ring of fringe of hair, um, kind of around his ears. And, uh, it looks like it may not be completely gray, but there's uh, quite a bit of gray in his hair and he's, he is stepping, yeah. um, for, he's, yeah, he's stepping forward. Um, and he's, he, he's actually telling me, um, he wants you, what he is saying is, may the sun shine upon you. He wants you to yeah. know that, that he's with you and that he is up there. He's kind of like your little cheerleader up there. Um, and he is just wanting to you to know that you are so loved and you are safe and you are being guided and that's where that whole yeah. may the sun shine upon you. Um, he's wanting you to know that he's always around um, and never doubt that. And there's uh, pennies are, are coming up. Um, I, I, like, I'm, like I'm sucking on a penny. Uh, so yeah. the, the idea, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, go on. Okay. Uh, this idea of, of pennies, um, let me see if I can kind of uh, zero in on what it is exactly about. Okay, uh, he's showing me that he's flipping the coin up in the air and he's looking for heads or tails. Um, he's indicating to me that this is something that that this is a special significance between you and the and you and him, um, you know, kind of like a like you were always challenging. You were always challenging each other on a very playful uh, on a very playful level, and he's wanting you to know that he he is remembering this, and in some way you have done some type of an honoring. You've honored him in some way. And so, again, the flipping of the coin, the heads, the tails, he's recognizing that um, that you have done something in his honor and that he knows this. And he is very appreciative of of this gesture that you have done for him. And interesting that it's coming up because of after what I just talked about here um, this evening and about honoring our, our loved ones. Um, he's a very gentle, he's a very gentle soul, but has a really great sense of humor. Um, very playful, very, uh, very free spirited. Yeah. Uh, let me see if there's anything else here that he would like to share. Um, 
uh, he, he's telling me that he's going for a walkabout, um, that he is. Okay. Okay. I see. He's, uh, so he is no, he wants you to know that he is no longer, um, suffering in pain and that he is traveling and he is seeing things and that he is very well and that you don't need to worry about him whatsoever. You can put your mind at ease, um, that he is so well uh, taken care of on the other side. And what he really wants you to do is is take care of you um, and take care of yourself. Yeah. Uh, he's telling me that that's something that you don't do very well is take care of yourself. And so he's he's really encouraging you to um, just be at peace and at ease knowing that he is okay. And now you can focus on you. And he's kind of he's kind of stepping back a little bit. So I don't think he has anything more he wants to bring forward. Is there something is there something specific that you would like to ask or to know? Um, well, it was the son that helped my come through. I'm sorry. Can you say that again? You're saying it. I hope that the sun might have come through. Yes. Um, he's saying he's saying um, you you don't need to worry. Um, that basically. Um, uh, Basically, that your um, all of your wishes and desires have been heard and are being taken care of. You just have to have the patience in order to, re- you know, have the patience to receive them. And that's the hardest thing for us to do here um, because our sense of time is so different than their sense of time. But he says, yeah. he says, be patient. Good things are coming your way. Okay. Okay. Is there anything else that you are needing to know this evening? Um, I don't think so, no. Okay. Well, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Yeah, thanks for telling me. Okay. Have a great night. Thank you. Uh, Next, we have Misty in Cornwall, Ontario, Canada. Good evening, Misty. Welcome to Your Time to Shine. Hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good, thank you. What can we do for you tonight? I was just wondering if you could Tell me about um, my love life or what's in in store for the future in that area. Okay. All right. Um, If you can just hold tight for just a minute, I'm going to check in uh, with spirit. And there's going to be a little bit of a pause here, but uh, just to let you know, I'm still here. So uh, give me just a couple minutes here and I'll be right back with you. No problem. Thank you. Uh, okay, so Misty, are I, I'm being told that you're in a relationship now? Is that correct? No, I just came out of one about three months ago. Okay, because what they were showing me are like uh, storm clouds and showing me rough seas, um, but then they're showing me that it's flattening out. Um, and the sun is coming out. 
Um, so basically saying that there's been, there has been or is going to be turbulent waters, but don't worry about that because it's going to be flattening out and it's going to be coming back into, um, it's going to be, it's going to be calming down. And uh, so this, they're telling me that the, the turbulence are from your past experience, um, the relationship that you just came out of. But now that that piece is gone, um, you're going to see that the waters are a lot calmer. Um, they're telling me that you, uh, you have learned a lot from this past relationship. And you're going to be able to take all those things that you learn and put them into, into, you know, um, coming relationships, which is going to actually help you and, um, and the person that you meet, um, because there's going to be a lot of teaching opportunities and the person that you meet is going to be more open to all those teaching opportunities. Whereas the relationship that you were in before, it was very closed off. It was very one way. It was very black or white. Um, and yeah. the next relationship that you come to is not going to be that way. It's going to be more open, more fluid. Um, one in which you can um, express yourself and they can express their self in a way that is not going to be volatile. Um, and so uh, know that there is going to be a little bit, they're showing me that there's going to be a little bit of time in between this one now and when somebody else new comes into your life. But they say, don't get frustrated. Um, don't fret over it because they've already got someone prepared coming in to meet you. And it's, it's you, you're going to be ecstatic. Um, you are going to be thinking, wow, this has been so worth everything that I've all, already been through. And all of the teachings, all of the experiences and the knowing that you've ha had from the last relationship is going to carry over into this one. Okay. And it's going to be a much easier, much smoother um, transition and uh, relationship than what you've had in the past. Is this the soulmate that's coming in, or I'm sorry, can you say that again? Is this a, is this a soulmate that's coming in? Uh, hang on, and let me check in. Uh, yes, I am getting that it is, uh, it is a soulmate. Um, soulmate can be such a, a tricky word. Um, and I think as humans, we kind of get obsessed with that. Um, but in that understanding that really what a soulmate is, is someone who there is a deep connection and a deep understanding of. And it's known the minute you meet, or if it's not within okay. the minute that you meet, it's definitely within a very short time. And you just know that the two of you just gel and just mold together perfectly. So in that respect, yes, um, it is okay. definitely a soulmate connection. Okay. You're not able to see what the person looks like, can you? Uh, let me see what kind of information they can give me. Yeah, they're, they're basically saying that there are a couple of people that it could be. They're showing me like this blank chalkboard, like it's a blank slate and it's, it's just starting, it's starting fresh, starting over. Um, they're not giving me an indication of what that person looks like. I asked um, if, cause sometimes I can get uh, names um, or some kind of information and at this time they're saying not right now you'll just you will know 
Um, I, and that's because there are a couple different ones that are kind of, that are there that could be that perfect match for you. So know that when we talk about soulmates, there could be more than one soulmate, um, you know, in our lifetime. And, you know, some people are very, very fortunate and, you know, in in finding a couple different soulmates um, in their lifetime. So um, I I keep feeling like the name starts with a J. Um, I keep hearing Jack. Uh, But here again, they just keep coming back to this blank slate, this blank slate. So I don't think they want you to get too caught up in this because you'll take it to heart and then you'll start looking for the people with the J's and the Jacks and the Johns and, you know, and they don't, they're, they're telling me, you know, don't do that. Don't take it, you know, that, that literally that just let it come naturally. You're going to know. So, okay. And Misty, we are coming down to the end of our show already. So I want to thank you so much for being on tonight. Have a good night. Thank you. You too. So an end to another week here on A1R Psychic Radio and Moonstruck TV. I am your host, Julie, on Your Time to Shine. If you would like to talk with me a little bit more, head over to my Facebook page at Your Time to Shine, or you can catch me on my website at wingsofsoulswithjulie.com. We will see you all again next week. Everyone have a great week.